because the first thing that I do uh, before I play a note on the horn, and I try to do this every day, and it's uh, is I uh, either buzz the mouthpiece, or in this case, I'm using a a, uh, a buzzard, which is uh, just a, an attachment that enhances buzzing, um, and then I uh, and then I attempt to bring forth in my memory uh, an F, and I attempt to buzz that. And I may have to search around until, I, and when I feel I have the F, I go over to the piano, if there's one nearby, and I, I test myself. And then I either correct it or whatever, and I just continue, just a few easy, and my intention is to try to get that F to straighten out. That's about all. Put the mouthpiece back on the horn. And uh, I attach a snark tuner to my bell. and I turn on a drone. I, I'm gonna turn on an F drone, and then I'm gonna play through what I've been playing through for 40 years, uh, the Caruso six note exercise. What, what I'm, this is something that it has to do with the way I, I, I feel for me to think. I'm, I'm not warming up. Um, I, at least I'm not doing a warm up. Um, what I'm doing is I'm is I'm is I'm going after world class long tones, starting on my F in the staff, and I'm going to take it chromatically up to B flat, and then I'm going to repeat that. the The idea is that while I'm doing that, the warming up is going to happen, because yeah. warming up uh, actually physiologically isn't something we do; it's something that happens while we're doing something that doesn't. That where you don't need to be warmed up to do, get it? <laughs> so anyway, yeah. that that changes everything in my head. Okay, so now what I'm going after is a perfectly straight F, and I'm using my ears now to, uh, as I go through <coughs> chromatically, to to feel perfectly in tune notes. I have my snark on, so that uh, which I'm not going to be staring at, but uh, when when I when I feel like I'm playing perfectly in tune, I'll put a glance on the snark and to either validate or to make some kind of adjustments. And the theory being that day after day, year after year, I'm, my ear is becoming more and more sensitive through that process. extension that I've added to the six notes because that that was as far as it went with Caruso and then you would begin with his interval exercises and move on from there um, uh, but I found for me um, uh, with my goals of, uh, of wanting to increase endurance and other other things like that 
I've, I've extended this a great deal. So what I do, usually do from this point is I'll set it on a, a C, a lower C, if I have one on the tuner, and I'm gonna go six notes down from F chromatically to C. perfectly straight in tune notes. <clears throat> Psych uh, psychologically, what I'm doing in my mind is I'm, is I'm trying to empty my mind of all thoughts and let my mind be completely absorbed by the, the vibrations and the <clears throat> waveforms in the air impinging on my eardrums. I'm, I'm really trying to be very conscious of me hearing both what's coming out of the, the drone and what I'm producing in my horn, and then the interaction that's going on around that. Um, I'm also constantly making subtle adjustments in my posture if I need to, because I'm looking for that perfect equilibrium, that perfect balance, where um, I feel like I'm just floating. There's no weight down on my air so that my, my, my air mechanism can work totally free of uh, of any uh, uh, um, hurdles or, or, or burdens. Uh, it's, it's nothing that you ever achieve perfectly, but you keep moving towards it. So I'm, I'm going to repeat the C before I do the next series. So this is F back down to C the second time. Also using the Caruso long setting, uh, you'll notice that uh, when I breathe, I'm breathing through my nose and I'm leaving the mouthpiece in place. So that's another thing. Now, I'm going to set the metronome back or on B flat where I ended the first set of six notes, middle B flat, and I'm going to go six notes up to E flat. Now, when I listen to myself, what I'm, when, I, when I hear any wiggles or any wobbles in my tone, um, the way I translate that is there's some kind of tension in my body and it's usually m maybe my posture is in a little too much of a collapsed position or it's not quite balanced. So I'll approach it by, by just looking, uh, correcting that. It's almost invisible to the eye, but, um, but I, I feel that uh, more often than not unless there's some kind of muscular uh, fatigue or something going on. Uh, that will take care of the uh, of the wiggles and wobbles. <laughs>
I just did um, one of the notes didn't speak and the way I understand that is not that okay I, I, I needed more air or whatever but <clears throat> what happened is is that the air and the embouchure stopped supporting each other in the way that they need to so um, so I simply got the air and the embouchure better engaged again and then I was on my way um, so that's important information um, with my embouchure uh, I think of my embouchure as a uh, the out the, all the stuff outside of the rim of the mouthpiece. I think of that as a frame, and I <clears throat> kind of relate it in my mind to the to the frame of a snare drum, and all of the stuff inside inside the rim of the mouthpiece the, the, is the vibrating the meat. That's like the drum head, and I and my my goal is to provide as stable a framework for that vibrating surface as I can and so um, um, and so while I'm playing long tones or, or anything uh, there's an awareness of that I want stillness stillness out here and I want vibrant energy to be allowed inside um, and it's not it's not an extreme thing because I, I think of the, uh, the, my, the frame is not a my frame is not made of wood or metal like a snare drum frame. I think of it as made uh, as as a as a kind of a hard rubber, and it's it's the degree of elasticity. I want a little bit of elasticity, but I don't want too much elasticity, and I don't want too much rigidity. So it's all about balance. Okay, now I I, I got up to E flat. So now I would put my tuner down to a to a G, and I'm going to start where I ended the previous set <clears throat> on the low C and I'm going to take that low C down to G. <laughs> Challenging down there because the because the uh, first of all the airflow is a lot faster so um, I don't always my intention is always to do two half notes and a whole note um, but uh, but I don't allow myself to uh, for the tone to deteriorate so when I know when 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 I'm out of air and I and I I, I don't try to I don't try to make extreme efforts when I'm out of air I'm out of air and the tone stops 
I let it, so that's, I, I don't try to force it into uh, achieving the length I want. The embouchure resistance and the airflow are much more delicate now, so the challenge is to keep that balance um, with, 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 with that lighter force just the opposite of the, when, when I go higher, which I'm going to do now, um, the, there's a much firmer balance. And in some ways, it's easier to maintain that. But it, then in other ways, now it, it takes, there's other elements that come into play. So drone up to the E-flat that I stopped at on the last ascending sequence. And I'm going to take it up six notes up to the A-flat. I'm always using breath attacks too on the on the first notes. That was that, that's all part of Caruso's uh, uh, exercises. Were the breath attack? Um, he always uh, uh, wanted you to use a breath attack um, because uh, he felt that 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 uh, the breath attack would ensure that your air and embouchure relationship was just right. Um, and uh, it also he would would say that it it just uh, physically. Uh, you get a physical understanding that it's the chops that are the note maker and not the tongue. Mm -hmm. So, when, on the sixth <coughs> note, you, 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 you start the notes with a, what we would call a breath attack. Uh, we normally think of it as a ha, but actually it's more accurate to think of it as a pa. Um, so, it's a breath attack and then, and then with the air, Without interrupting the airflow, steady airflow, you just very lightly articulate. It's almost inaudible, but it's a very light yeah. tongue stroke. That was that was his, uh, and it's it's good. Um, but the basic idea of the long setting then is that when you're when you take your breath, you just everything just stays there, mm -hmm. and you breathe through the nose, and then. Um, then you start the next note. You don't have to, and and that I I find is has been extremely valuable in in just at this stage of the game in just helping you to really establish a very a, a stable embouchure. So your snare drum frame maintains a bit of rigidity through the entire exercise. Right. I try to keep the frame feeling the same. Yeah. 